How's it going everybody? My name is Jim. Welcome to Restoration Projects. This video is going to be a quick uh, truing up of this wheel that came off a 72 inch, I think it's 2 by 72 inch belt grinder. And what the issue with it is, is there's high spots in this rubber here. So they formed this rubber onto this wheel after they, um, when they get it. And the rubber was not taken down on the lathe, so it's not trued up. So there are some high spots here. And so what we're going to do is we want to take this, put this on the lathe, and true this on up. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use some high-speed steel. Uh, I'm gonna sharpen this up, try to give this a little bit more aggressive rake angle, so it acts more as a cutting force instead of a shearing force. The um, reason I don't want to use carbide is carbide's a little bit duller, so I can get high-speed steel pretty darn sharp and since it's a rubbery type material I want to cut it and not shear it off so uh, we're gonna get this thing set up in the lathe grind this up and we'll get this thing tuned up so my plan for how I might true this up and hold this in the lathe is <clears throat> it has this nut on the back here that has been machined down and I'm gonna put that the three jaw chuck and I clamp it onto here this three jaw chuck is too big to fit and if I was to take this um, arbor out it's too big to fit inside this hole so next best option I have is just to clamp onto this machine surface this will reduce the run out as much as possible um, and then I'm going to have the shaft here sticking out and I'll have my live center going into this uh, hole here so it'll help push it in and support it so I just have to get my three jot chuck not to fall into any of these little grooves that are in here so Take my time, make sure I get this thing in here just right. Okay, we have about probably about nine thousandths of run out here. Uh, I've tried tapping this in here, readjusting, and this is about as true as I'm getting it. Um, so, for what we're doing here, for just facing off this end here, I think we'll be okay. Okay, so my carriage at the very bottom there will hit the bottom side of that wheel. So what I have to do is I'm going to have to turn my cross side around in order to be able to make this cut. So we have this thing running pretty slow, and I wanted to show you what exactly we're trying to accomplish here by truing it up. So I'm going to try to bring the camera in so you can see there's a cutter edge, and you can see the wobble that that wheel has. And that wobble is just high spots on the face of the wheel. The sides are trued up, but they never trued up the face. So this is what we're taking out right here, is that wobble.
So I'm going to bring you in here and we'll take a look at the surface finish. And let's see if I can get this thing to zoom in here. So right there, you can see we are taking off the leading edge there, but since this deflects, it's just not cutting the greatest. So what we're gonna do is try a different cutter here, one that has a lot more steep of a angle. That way it will be more of a uh, shearing factor. Okay, here is the new cutting tool I put in here. I just sharpened it up on the stone. But as you can see, that has a lot more aggressive angle there. So hopefully that will cut better than the past one that we used. Okay, I had to change up my plan here. I had this uh, cutter in the quick change tool post holder and it was not reaching all the way over here without crashing the saddle into the wheel. So I went and dug around, have these old Armstrong tool holders here and was able to get the uh, cutter in there and it hangs out pretty far, but it's far enough that it'll be able to get over here and get this final edge. Um, I'm going to be honest, I've thought about getting rid of these because they've just been sitting in my toolbox and I haven't used them in years. So, you know, this is just a uh, good example of one to keep around old tooling. Even if it's stuff that you don't use that often, um, you're going to find days like today where you need this uh, particular tool holder to get the job done. So um, it's always good to have a good assortment around. Okay, we have this part finished. So just kind of a quick overview here. Um, yes, this is a lot of stick out for a piece of tooling, but for the type of material for this just being a tough rubber and using a pretty sharp cutter, um, I felt this was the safest option to go with. As you can see there, the carriage is pretty close to this wheel. So um, ideal, no, but it got the job done and I feel it was a safe way to do it. As far as making sure that this thing is perfectly round, um, since I'm not using a micrometer to you know feel each one of these out here, what I'm doing is I line up usually with the red part of this handle here and I'm watching this thing spin, and as it's spinning, I'm seeing if there's any height difference, and it's coming out to be the same. So um, that's an eyeball method. That's not an exact method. That's just gonna get you close. Um, that's more for like setup before you put your micrometer on something. But for a part like this where it's just rubber and it has these grooves in here, where it's not practical to use a micrometer in here to measure each one, I felt that, that was the uh, appropriate way to tell if this thing's true is the eyeball method. We did take a quite a bit of material off here, um, but again, this thing is trued up and so this thing is ready for service. So I'm gonna get the vacuum out, clean up the lathe, and uh, again, if you guys got something out of the video, please smash that subscribe button and thank you for watching.